in this lesson, we want to talk about the polar form of a line. All right, so we've spent a lot of time talking about the polar coordinate system and also how to convert rectangular coordinates to polar coordinates and then take those polar coordinates and plot them on the polar grid. What we're going to do now is take the next step and talk about polar equations, okay? So we're going to need to know how to convert between the rectangular form and the polar form. And we're also going to need to know how to graph these equations on the polar grid. So today we're going to start out with something very simple. It's the polar form of a line and basically graphing them and converting them back and forth between the rectangular form and the polar form. Okay, so basically what you need to know is if you're going from your rectangular form to your polar form, it's very, very simple. You're going to use a relationship that we've talked about many times, and that's basically that the sine of theta, going back to the original definition, is y over r, right? You could say opposite over hypotenuse. And the cosine of theta is equal to x over r, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. What we're going to do in each case is multiply both sides by r. So I'll say this is r times sine of theta, multiply this by r, and that would cancel. So you've solved this for y here. Same thing over here, multiply this side by r and this side by r, this would cancel over here. And what you end up with is a relationship you're going to use to convert this, okay? So I'm going to take this right here, this r times sine of theta, and I'm going to plug it in for y. And then I'm going to take this right here, this r times cosine of theta, and I'm going to plug it in for x. That's all you need to do. Now, Depending on your teacher, they may have you work with some generic form. So this is the standard form of the line. You also have the slope intercept form, the y equals mx plus b. If you're working with this a lot, you may need to convert it over generically, okay? And then you can just plug in for your a, b, and c, okay? Or in this case, you would just be plugging in for your m and your b, okay? But it just depends on what you want to do. Let me just go ahead. I'm going to solve this generically. And then on the first example, what we'll do is we'll just plug it in that way. And then I'll also plug it in the other way. I'll show you it's the same thing. Okay. So let's just go ahead and plug in R times cosine of theta here. And then R times the sine of theta here. Okay. So what would we have? You would have A multiplied by R times the cosine of theta. Plus you would have your B times your R times your sine of theta. Okay. And this just equals C. Now, the idea here is that you're going to factor out the R, okay, and then you're going to solve for R. So if I pulled that guy out, okay, if I pulled that guy out, I would have R times the quantity. What's left? Your A times your cosine of theta. So A times cosine of theta plus your B times your sine of theta. So your B times your sine of theta. And this is equal to C, okay? So let's stop for a minute. Let's scroll down and get a little bit of room going. How can we solve this for R? Remember, this whole thing is a quantity, and it is multiplying by r, okay? So what I can do is just divide both sides by this quantity, this a times the cosine of theta plus b times the sine of theta, okay, perfectly legal. And so what's going to happen is this is going to cancel with this. That will be 1. So you have r by itself, and it's equal to. And over here, let me scooch this down a little bit so this looks a little bit better. I'm going to divide this by the same thing. So a times the cosine of theta plus b times the sine of theta, okay? So r equals, you have your c, which is your constant from the ax plus by equals c, over your a times your cosine of theta plus your b times your sine of theta, where the a is the coefficient from x and the b is the coefficient for y. Now you could do a similar process with the y equals mx plus b, get yourself a general formula for that. It's up to you in terms of how many of these problems you're going to have to solve and whether it's worth or not to use a general formula or just plug in each time, okay? But what I want to say is if you're going to use this formula, make sure that your line is in the format of ax plus by equals c. It must be in this format to use this formula, okay? It's very, very important because a lot of times you get the slope-intercept form or something else given to you, okay? And people start plugging things in and they get the wrong answer. So let's go ahead and just look at a simple example. So here we have y equals x minus 4. Okay, this is in slope-intercept form. So this follows the y equals m the slope times x plus b the y-intercept. Okay, so we know this. If we want to convert this to standard form, so we can use that little formula, then what we would do is we would subtract x away from each side. Okay, so I would say that I have negative x plus y is equal to negative 4. Now, for myself, I prefer the high school definition of the standard form of the equation of a line. 
And so I want the coefficient here for x to be positive. And to do that, I'm just going to multiply everything by negative 1. So this would be x minus y is equal to 4. Okay, It just changes the sign of every term when you multiply both sides by negative 1. Okay, so let me actually erase this and this. Okay, And at this point, basically, you can use your formula. You know that the coefficient for x is a 1. The coefficient for y is a negative 1, and your constant is a 4. So in other words, the a value is 1, the b value is negative 1, and the c value is positive 4. So remember, r is equal to, you have your c over, you have your a times cosine of theta, plus your b times your sine of theta. Okay. If you do this a few times, you will memorize it. Now, what I'm going to do is just plug in. So instead of c, I have 4. Instead of a, I have 1, so you can just get rid of that. And instead of b, I have negative 1, so I can just change this to a minus. And that's all it is. So r equals 4 over the cosine of theta minus the sine of theta. Okay. Now, you might be thinking, how in the world are we going to graph something like this? And I'll show you that in a moment. But really quickly, I just want to show you, if you had done this the other way, that you would get the same answer. right? So basically, if I plugged in r times cosine of theta there and I plugged in r times the sine of theta there, I could achieve this same result, okay? So what I could do is say, I have r times sine of theta, and then what I'm gonna do is say, I'm gonna subtract this right here away from each side. So I'll say minus r times cosine of theta, and this is going to be equal to negative four, okay? And from here, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna factor the r out. So I'll say r times the quantity, sine of theta, and then I'll say minus the cosine of theta, and this will be equal to negative 4, okay? And then I'm going to divide both sides by this so that r is equal to, you'll have negative 4 over, I'm going to go ahead and say, I'm going to put negative cosine of theta first, and then plus the sine of theta, right? So the only difference between this and this is the sine. And of course, what you could do here is you could multiply the numerator and denominator by negative 1, okay? That's perfectly legal because that's a complex form of 1. So this would become positive, this would become positive, and this would become negative. And essentially what would happen here is your two forms would match up completely, right? R equals 4 over cosine theta minus sine of theta in each case. Okay, so let's erase all of this, and let's talk about graphing now. So graphing a polar equation is probably one of the most difficult things to graph. And with a line, it's a little bit more challenging. Lines are a lot easier to graph on the rectangular coordinate plane. To see this really quickly, let's think about y equals x minus 4 on the rectangular coordinate plane. We know that the y-intercept, the y-intercept is going to be at 0, comma negative 4. And m, the slope, is equal to 1, right, the coefficient for x. So essentially, I could plot 0, comma negative 4 and then just use my slope of 1 to get additional points. So if I come here... I can see that I just drop down to 0, comma, negative 4. That's right there. And then I can use my slope. So up 1 to the right one, up 1 to the right one, you know, so on and so forth. I can generate this point and this point and this point. As many points as you need. You only need two points to get a line. A lot of times people like three to get a check, but you only need two. Now, let's say that I wanted to graph that equation in polar form on the polar grid. What could we do? Well, you can go back to your original strategy of making a table of values. So we would go back, just make a little table, and say, okay, I have my r value and my theta value. And I like to plug in values for theta, okay, and then get a value for r. So what I'm going to do here is I already know that the y-intercept occurs at 0, comma, negative 4. That's pretty easy to convert over. So this point right here, you can use the traditional method to convert it over. That's up to you. But what I'm going to do is just think about the fact that, okay, if I'm starting here at the origin, I need to travel one, two, three, four units to get there, okay? And essentially, the angle here is going to be 270 degrees. I know the R value is four, okay? Not negative four, but four. And the angle is 270 degrees. So if I come back, I can say that a theta value of 270 degrees would give me an R value of four. And you can check this out. If you plugged in a 270 degrees there and also there, what would you get? Well, the cosine of 270 degrees is zero, okay? So essentially you would have four over, you would have zero minus. The sine of 270 degrees is negative one. Minus the negative one is one, okay? So essentially you would have four there, right? So you would get four comma 270 degrees as one of your points, okay? Then the other one, 
if you think about your x-intercept here, well, again, you can go back to your graph that this guy right here is four comma zero, okay? So essentially from the origin, I have moved one, two, three, four units to the right. So the R value is gonna be four, okay? But the angle here is gonna be zero degrees, right? Because I'm on the positive X axis. So if I go back, that point would be four comma zero degrees, okay? Again, you can plug this in. Plug in a zero degrees here and a zero degrees here. You would have four over. The cosine of zero degrees is going to be one. And then minus the sine of zero degrees is gonna be zero. So this would be four over one, which is four, okay? So that's another point, so four comma zero degrees. All right, so now that we have these two points, we're ready to sketch our graph. So again, our two points, we have the four comma zero degrees, so that's gonna be right here. And the other one is gonna be four comma 270 degrees. So I'm gonna be swinging around to right here, so that's right there. And then basically, once you have those two points, that gives you a line, so you can sketch that guy, and you are done, okay. Let's look at another example. So here we have y equals negative two x minus six. Again, you can put this in standard form and use your formula. You can plug in for x and y, whatever you wanna do. I'm just gonna use the formula. So I'm going to add two x to both sides of the equation. And I'll go ahead and say that this is two x plus y is equal to negative six. So my value for a is two, it's the coefficient for x. My value for b is one, and let me put that invisibly, okay? That's gonna be my coefficient for y. And then my value for c, my constant is negative six. Okay, so now I'm just gonna plug into the formula. I'll say that r is equal to, you're gonna have your c value, which is negative six. So let me put a negative out in front. I'll put the six out up here. And then over, you have a, which is two, times the cosine of theta. And then plus, you're gonna have your b value, which is one, so don't write anything, times the sine of theta, okay? So that's all it is. So this is our equation. You can see that using that formula is pretty quick. And essentially, if I wanna graph this, again, the simplest way for me to do this is to think about this on the rectangular plane. If I can get the x and the y intercept, that's gonna give me two points that I can really quickly convert over to polar form, and I'm done, okay? In some cases, you won't be able to do that. I'll give you an example of that later on. So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, well, the y intercept, the y-intercept, since this is in slope-intercept form, I know is at zero comma negative six. So think about this, if I was at the origin, I would be going down one, two, three, four, five, six units to get there, okay? And from the positive x-axis, I'm swinging around 270 degrees. So essentially my r value is gonna be six, and my theta value is gonna be 270 degrees. And again, if you're not comfortable with what I'm doing, just take the normal steps to convert this that we talked about over the course of the last two lessons, okay? Then the other guy here, the x-intercept, the x-intercept, if we think about that, well, if I plugged in a zero there, I would have basically zero is equal to negative two x minus six, add two x to both sides, so two x is equal to negative six, divide both sides by two, you get x is equal to negative three, okay? So this would be negative three comma zero. So in polar, what would that be? Well, negative three, if I start right here, let's say we're gonna go one, two, three units to the left, okay? Don't worry about it being negative, it's three units to the left. And the angle with the positive x-axis, we're gonna come around 180 degrees, okay? So this guy is going to be, let me kind of scooch this down a little bit. This guy is going to be three, comma 180 degrees okay so that's gonna be my two points in polar so if i come over here again i go out to a circle with a radius of three i'm gonna swing around to 180 degree angle so there's that point there then for the other guy i'm gonna go out to a circle with a radius of six and i'm gonna swing around here to an angle of 270 degrees okay then you can just sketch a line through those two points okay let's now talk about the harder scenario this is where we're going from the polar form to the rectangular form. So when you work with this, you need to understand a few relationships. The first one is that the tangent of theta is equal to y over x. Just going back to that definition, you're gonna need this a lot. Also, you're gonna need to know that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Again, we've talked about that a lot, and we'll see how to use these as we go forward, okay? For right now, I'm just gonna use this relationship here, okay? And so I have that theta is equal to two pi over three. Now, because my polar grid is written in degrees, I'm gonna change this and say theta is equal to 120 degrees. Okay, I'm just gonna convert that over. And essentially, when you see something that's theta is equal to K, this is a line that passes through the origin, okay? We're thinking about it that way. Now, 
how could I convert this over? Well, to convert it over, what I would do is I would first take the tangent of each side, okay? So if I take the tangent of each side, I would have the tangent of theta is equal to the tangent of 120 degrees, okay? Now pause the video and think for a minute about how you can get this into rectangular form. How can I get this into an equation with x and y? Now, if you gave that a shot, first I would say, okay, what is the tangent of 120 degrees? Well, it's the negative of the square root of 3. So let's erase this, or actually, let me keep this in line, and let me actually keep that step there in case people get confused. So the negative of the square root of 3, and over here, notice that I have the tangent of theta. Okay, this is the trick here. You're going to replace that with y over x, because the tangent of theta is equal to or the same as y over x. So I'll say y over x is equal to the negative of the square root of 3. So once you realize that, it's pretty easy from here. All I really need to do is multiply both sides by x. So multiply this side by x and multiply this side by x. And I'll say y is equal to, I'll say the negative of x times the square root of 3. So this is the rectangular form of that equation. Now, if we think about graphing this, again, if I had something that was theta is equal to 120 degrees, and you stop for a minute and think about that, you think about the fact that there is no R value given. So it means that no matter what the R value, whether it's positive, we know we can have negatives, that basically I'm going to be on a 120 degree angle. So if I think about starting at the pole here, the origin, if I'm walking forward, I'm going to be on this 120 degree angle here. Remember how if you have a negative R value, you're walking backwards. So again, I would find 120 degrees and I would walk backwards, okay? So essentially here R is greater than zero, and then down here your R values are less than zero, okay? So again, this part is a little bit confusing. Again, if the R value is less than zero, and you had a 120 degree angle, you would find that angle, you would turn around, and you would walk this way, backwards. Now, you could also draw the same line by saying that theta is equal to 300 degrees, okay? So I know people would ask that because essentially, if I gave you that one, well now, the R value here would be positive, okay? Because here I'll be walking forward, and then the R values going this way would be negative, okay? So it's just a way to write the same line, okay? But there's different conditions there where R is gonna be positive in one direction for this one, and R is gonna be positive in a different direction for this one, okay? Let's look at a harder example. So this is one that takes a little bit of thought. So here we have R is equal to the cosecant of theta plus 45 degrees. All right. Whenever you see cosecant or cotangent or secant, go ahead and write it in terms of sine or cosine and see if that makes anything easier for you, okay? Remember when we worked with our trigonometric identities, that was the general strategy, okay? So that's what we're gonna do here. I'm gonna say R is equal to, we know that, 1 over the sine of theta is equal to the cosecant of theta. Okay, that's the relationship. So I'm going to say this is 1 over the sine of theta plus 45 degrees. Okay, now from here I can multiply both sides by this sine of theta plus 45 degrees, and that's going to give me that r times the sine of this theta plus 45 degrees, okay, is equal to 1. Now, again, 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 we know that we can't just distribute this sign inside, right? We know that we have a sign sum identity, and we need to use that here, okay? So to do that, I'm going to put some brackets around this guy, and remember how this identity works. It's the sine of the first guy, so the sine of theta, times the cosine of the second guy, so the 45 degrees. Then you're going to have plus, you're going to go the cosine of the first guy, which is theta, times the sine of the second guy, which is 45 degrees, okay? So go ahead and close that down, and this equals to 1, okay? So from here, you see that it's getting a little bit easier because we know that the sine of 45 degrees and the cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. So all you have to do is replace that. So I'll say r times, I'll just use some parentheses here, I'll say the square root of 2 over 2, and then times the sine of theta, Okay, and then plus I'll say my square root of 2 over 2 times the cosine of theta. Okay, and this equals 1. So from here I need to do two things. Remember we have this relationship where x is equal to r times cosine of theta and y is equal to r times the sine of theta. Okay, so if I distribute this r into each term, you notice that I could replace r times sine of theta with y and r times cosine of theta with x. Okay. 
Also, I'd want to factor this guy out at the same time. I know I'm doing two steps in one, but I think you're strong enough to get that, okay? So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna pull this out. So I'm gonna say I have the square root of two over two, and then I'm gonna distribute the r in. So I'm gonna have r times sine of theta, and then plus I'll have r times cosine of theta. And of course, let me make these parentheses a little bit better. I'll say this is equal to one. Now, from here, Again, r times sine of theta, that's just y. r times cosine of theta, that's just x. So what I'm going to do is say I have square root of 2 over 2 times I'll have basically y plus x. You could rearrange that as x plus y. It's really up to you. And then I'll say this equals 1. Now, what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 2 over square root of 2. So times 2 over square root of 2. This is going to cancel. And this is going to give me, I'll just go ahead and write this as x plus y is equal to, I'll have 2 over square root of 2. And of course, we always want to rationalize the denominator. Let me move this over a little bit. So I'll multiply this by the square root of 2 over the square root of 2. And what's going to happen is this down here would become 2. So this would be 2. And up here, this would be times the square root of 2. We'll notice that now you can cancel this with this. So I'm just left with the square root of 2. Okay. So here we have x plus y equals the square root of 2. Now, let's talk about graphing this. So if we have x plus y is equal to the square root of 2. From here, I can figure out that my x-intercept would be what? Well, if I plugged in a 0 for y, I would basically say that the x-intercept would be square root of 2 comma 0, and then basically my y-intercept, my y-intercept, would be what? It would be 0, right, if I plug that in for x, comma square root of 2, okay? So again, these are easy to convert over. Now, the square root of 2 is something you have to approximate. Most people will say this is about 1.41, okay? So I'll go ahead and say that I have about 1.41 comma 0, and then I'll have 0 comma about 1.41, okay? Now, let's say we wanted to convert these over to polar form. For this one, I know that if I just start at the origin and I'm just going to the right, by 1.41 units, my angle is going to be 0 degrees, and my r value is going to be 1.41. So this is 1.41 comma 0 degrees, okay? For this one, I'm going to be going up. So from the origin, I'm going to go up by 1.41 units, okay? So my r value, again, is 1.41, and my theta value here, the angle, if I think about it this way, right, that's going to be 90 degrees, so this is 90 degrees, okay? Now you can go back and check this. Let me grab this real quick. We'll come back up here and paste this in. You can check these real quick. If you put in zero degrees there, the sine of 45 degrees is square root of two over two, okay? And if you think about it, you have one divided by that, so you're just flipping it. And so you're gonna end up with two. You're gonna end up with two over the square root of two. Again, rationalize the denominator, okay? And you're gonna end up with just the square root of two. Okay, so a zero degree angle for theta gives me square root of two for r. Okay, so we know that. Then the other one, you can do this one. You plug in 90 degrees there. Well, 90 degrees plus 45 degrees gives you 135 degrees. You still have a 45 degree reference angle, so it's going to be the same thing, right? So basically, I'm going to end up with an r value of square root of two. Okay, now if you wanted one other point, you can think about your unit circle here. It's something that would work pretty nicely. You know that the sine of 30 degrees is equal to one half. And so if I could make this bottom part one half, okay, somehow, some way, one divided by one half would be two. That would be a nice point to plot, okay? So what I could do, I could think about, okay, well, sine of 150 degrees, 150 degrees has a 30 degree reference angle. Sine of 150 degrees would also be a half. And what I could do is I could add 105 degrees. So I could put 105 degrees in there, okay? So I would have sine of 105 degrees plus 45 degrees is 150 degrees, okay? And the sine of 150 degrees is a half. So then your R value there would basically be two, right? Because one divided by half is two. And the theta value here, don't plug in 150 degrees. It's what you're putting in here for theta, okay? So theta is 105 degrees. That's what you put in there. Be very careful. A lot of students make that mistake. When you're plugging something in for theta, that's what's going in here. I am plugging in 105 degrees. I am not plugging in 150 degrees. 150 degrees is the result that comes from adding 45 degrees to 105 degrees. Okay, so very important to make that clear. Now, once you have these three points, you can go ahead and sketch this guy. So let's go ahead and say that this point right here is going to be my point, which is an R value of, let's say, 1.41 approximately. 
and then I'll say the theta value is zero degrees. Okay, so that's one point. Then this point right here is going to be my R value of 1.41, okay? So you notice how it would be on the same circle there, okay? And then basically the angle here is 90 degrees, okay, so you can see that. And so let me draw an arrow to that. And then also we have this point right here. If you go out to a circle with a radius of two, and we swing around to this 105 degree angle. Remember, you want a 105 degree angle, not a 150 degree angle, but a 105 degree angle. This guy right here would be a point two. So you would have two comma 105 degrees, okay? So you're just finding some points and then sketching a line through the points. All right, let's also talk about horizontal and vertical lines to wrap things up. So if you get something like y equals b, you know this is a horizontal line, right? So basically, no matter what the x value is, y always equals that constant b, okay? And essentially for this, I would just say, okay, well, I have r times sine of theta. Just plugging that in for y there is equal to b. And I would divide both sides by the sine of theta, okay? So both sides by the sine of theta. And so if you see something like r is equal to some constant b over the sine of theta, you know that you have a horizontal line, okay? That's very clear. And I'll show you an example of this in a moment. Let's also look at the vertical line. So you know if you have something like x equals a, this is a vertical line, no matter what the value is for y, x always equals that constant a. So here I'm just gonna plug in r times cosine of theta. And essentially I would have r times cosine of theta is equal to a, divide both sides by the cosine of theta. So divide by the cosine of theta. So you get r is equal to a over the cosine of theta, okay? So this is your vertical line in polar form. All right, let's look at two quick examples. So we see here we have y equals three. To convert this over, again, if it's a horizontal line, then I know it's gonna be r is equal to, you're gonna have this constant here, which is three, over the sine of theta. Okay, that's all it is. And to graph this, it's no different than when you graphed it on the rectangular coordinate plane. You would basically just go up from the origin three units, okay, by this number of units, and make a horizontal line. If you go here, and you look at this guy, you can start here, I go up to a circle with a radius of three, so I'm right there. So basically one point of the line, and we'll verify this in a second, would be three for the radius and then 90 degrees for the angle, okay? So that guy would be on that line, and then essentially you would just draw a horizontal line there. Some other points you would have six, comma, you would have 30 degrees, okay? And then another point you could see that you would have six, comma, 150 degrees. Notice that 150 degrees has the same reference angle, and also since sine is positive in quadrants one and two, it would have the same sine value, right? In each case, it's a half. So if we go back and we think about, does this work? Well, the sine of 90 degrees is one. So three over one is three, so that works, right? Basically, if I plugged in 90 degrees there, my R value would be three. And then if I did R is equal to three over the sine of 30 degrees or the sine of 150 degrees, well, in each case, this would be a half. And essentially, you would have three times two, which is six, okay? So there you would get six comma 30 degrees or six comma 150 degrees. All right, so lastly, we have X is equal to negative three. So following the formula, we'll say R is equal to, we'll say negative three. We'll go ahead and say that's divided by the cosine of theta, okay? So before we go to the graph, again, if you think about a point that's gonna work, think about your coordinate plane. If this is zero comma zero, if I want the x-intercept, which is gonna occur at negative one, negative two, negative three. So this point right here on the rectangular would be negative three comma zero, right? So if I'm drawing a vertical line, this is where it's going to cross. Now, if you think about this, this is gonna be what? It's gonna be an r value of three. And then again, this angle here is gonna be 180 degrees. So you can stop and plug that in and see if it works. The cosine of 180 degrees is negative one, right? So essentially we would have negative three over negative one, which is gonna be equal to three. Okay, so that gives me that point right there. You could grab other points. You know that the cosine of 120 degrees is negative a half, and then also the cosine of 240 degrees is negative a half. So if you did something like, let's say, 120 degrees, and then also 240 degrees, what's gonna happen is you're gonna be dividing by negative one half, which is like negative three times, you'll do negative two, which is six. Okay, so this would be some points, and I know that six and three don't match up, but remember, we're on the polar grid. So if we look at this guy, you can see that from here, you're basically going to go out to a circle with a radius of three, and then swing around to a 180 degree angle. 
So there's your x-intercept as it would be on your rectangular coordinate plane. Here it's going to be at 3, 180 degrees, okay? From there you can basically make a vertical line, but I just want to show you again, this point right here would basically be going out to a circle with a radius of 6, swinging around to a 120 degree angle, or going out to a radius of 6 and swinging all the way around until you get to 240 degrees, so that's that point there.